Joining us now in the MMA Fight Corner, Dominic the Dominator Cruz, former UFC bantamweight champion and currently working as an analyst. But I'm sure the number one burning question for everybody out there listening is we know you've had a, a rough road to recovery. You've had the, the groin injury as a setback before facing Hanem Barrao. What are we looking at right now as far as a, a timeline for your possible return? Uh, the timeline I, I can give right now is this year. I'm um, just piecing together, fine-tuning my body, trying to get all my muscles to work in unison so I can go out there and fight uh, like I like I used to. So this year is the goal, and uh, I'm right on track. Like we mentioned earlier, it has been about three years almost. So, I mean, it, you know, that's the given timeline by time that you do return. How is the recovery going and the rehab? What are you really doing to to strengthen up those muscles and to come back in tip-top shape? It takes a lot of uh, specific muscle group training. So I have to do odd stuff that I can't even really explain to you, like uh, they're going to hold the outside of my legs and I have to just open my legs a million times. It's real dumb rehab stuff. It seems insignificant, uh, but it's extremely important to get all your muscles firing and working so that they don't fail and they don't compensate in different areas to cause more muscle failure. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm just doing my rehab, also mixing in my fight training simultaneously until I can get back to full speed. Well, you sure are balancing a lot between doing that, working the recovery, getting everything back in shape, and still providing great analysis for the fans on the different various UFC shows that you've been on. What is that role like for you, and how much do you enjoy doing that? Because you really seem to just get into every single detail. Yeah, I really like it, but my brain kind of works that way anyway, so I think it's kind of one of those things I'm somewhat built for. Uh, you know, I've been blessed to have the position and let and Fox gave me the opportunity to go out there and try it and I and uh it came pretty natural to me to an extent. So um, you know, God blessed me with some gifts to be able to go out there and do what I love, fighting, and now also I get to break it down, which is what I do anyway. So um I love it. I have no problem with it at all. Well the way you do it really is uh top notch. It's Besides, uh, you know, with Brian Stan, I really enjoy seeing the different fighters that come in as analysts, even Daniel Cormier. I mean, everybody that is on that show just really has the knack for it. So we appreciate that very much. Well, it's always nice to hear that. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, now looking with the analyst hat on, you see a guy like Hanem Burrell, who's been very dominant in what he's been able to accomplish with his career and his 33-fight unbeaten streak. And next he's set to defend his title against TJ Dillashaw. What do you see in Hanem Burrell that, from an analyst's perspective, makes him so dominant? Well, from an analyst's perspective, what makes Hanem uh, so powerful is it's a few things. One, um, he's got a championship spirit, being he doesn't really back down. He's very mentally tough. You can see that. And he believes in himself. But more than that, when it comes to his style uh, physically, it's, he, stay, he sticks to fundamentals. And he takes his time piecing together the fight. Each round, he doesn't rush anything. He doesn't. He makes you fight at his pace, at his range, the way he wants to fight, always. And nobody's challenged that. Everybody's fought uh, Hen and Burrell's fight. Nobody's even made him slightly uncomfortable once. So that being said, it's kind of easy to go out there and look so dominant uh, when you're doing the right things like Hen is. So that he just he's staying composed. He keeps his hands up. He's got great kicks. He mixes his strikes up. He throws knees. He, he's uh, he's got some spinning attacks if you try to circle. So. He just mixes things up well, and he's got a good mindset for the sport, and he's a great challenge. When you look at a competitor like TJ Dillashaw, who's one of the young up-and-comers of the bantamweight division that was actually on the Ultimate Fighter Season 14 as a finalist, what do you see from what he brings to the table as far as being able to prevent Hanem Burrell from imposing as well? Well, something I like about Dillashaw is he's improved his striking. You see him add a little bit of... uh, you know, a little bit of unorthodox spin in his striking as he's developed into a, a better and better athlete through his career from the Ultimate Fighter. 
his style has changed so much since the Ultimate Fighter. It's not the same person. He's no longer a green fighter anymore. He is now confident. He believes in himself. And uh, I, I know just by seeing Bill Shaw around, he believes he's the champion. So uh, I think that he's going to go out there and put on a better show than a lot of people think. And I think that he, he, he causes a good case for this fight because of the way that he fights. He's believing in his kicks. He's believing in his, in his punches. But more than anything, he mixes his wrestling with his striking pretty well. And that's something that not a lot of people have tried to, to do to him. And usually they try to shoot one time and then they get stuffed and that's it. That's all the shots you see from people against Hennon because he dictates the range so well. Well, I think that Gil Shaw will at least attempt more shots, and I think he has a good case to be able to get him down. If we see Hennon Burrell on his back more than one time in this fight, I think he can kind of mess up the rhythm of his striking and make it a more more, uh, str- more competitive fight, is what I'm trying to say. Now, as a competitor looking at Hennon Burrell, how hungry are you to get in there and be able to mix it up with him? Because Dana White had said that when you do return, you're still in line for an immediate title shot. Yeah, you know, Dana did say that, and uh, I just listen my, you know, to bosses and do what I'm told and fight whoever they give me. I'm going to pick the fight of my life. So, you know, whoever I get, whoever the matchmakers put me up with, I'm going to fight. But, you know, right now I'm not even... It's like I don't really get into the mindset of who I'm fighting until I'm in that camp for basically like three weeks. And the reason is, you know, injuries happen. People get hurt. They pull out of fights. I could get a brand new person while I'm in camp. That, I mean, look what I did to, to Hennon, unfortunately. He ended up getting favored three weeks out of the fight that he thought he was fighting me. Now, that doesn't make me happy to have done that to anybody. Um, but... It's the reality of sport if injuries happen. So I really don't get in the mindset of fighting somebody until I'm already in camp for that person, a solid four weeks. That last four weeks of the camp will be dedicated to picking apart the style of that human being that I'm fighting and, and, and how I'm going to strategically fight him. And when I get to that point, I'll be there. But until then, I'm focused on health. I know it's also looking into the future, but would you want that fight first or would you really want to do a tune-up fight of any sort? I've never picked a fight in my life, so for me to say I want this, I want that. You know, when I when I was fighting Hennon before, I was still the champion. You know, that's the fight that I was lined up for. That's the fight that I deserved. That's the fight that I was at. You know, right now, yes, I did lose my title due to injury, but I lost my title. I'm no longer the champion. That's been said. Hennon Brown is now the current champion. So I have no, you know, I, I don't dictate who or or where I fight, I just fight. That's my job, I, and I really don't care. <laughs> I just want to get in there and fight. Like that's that's all I really need to worry about right now is getting in there and being active. I hear you, man. It really does have to be tough on you, just you know, being on the sidelines. It really has to be. I mean, especially when you have that competitive edge just naturally built into you. As the UFC has been growing over the past year, you know, some things that have come out is, for instance, they're going to head to Mexico. And being a fighter of Mexican descent, how intriguing is this to you? And how much would it mean to you to actually be a part of that card somehow? Man, it'd be pretty amazing. I am of Mexican descent. I am trying to learn Spanish more fluently, so that would probably help a lot. Um but, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool card that we get to go down there. You know, you got Cain Velasquez out there fighting. I know that card's going to go absolutely insane when he gets out there. He's like the king of the Mexicans right now. <laughs> and it's pretty awesome to watch that guy fight. It is amazing. Um, he just throws down, and nobody can stop him. It's it's pretty crazy. So I look forward to, to that UFC slowly penetrating into that area, and then I'm sure, I'm certain that sooner or later I can be out there again soon. Well, excellent, Dominic. I just want to thank you again for your time. And we really appreciate you coming on the show. And I want to wish you all the best in your recovery, man. I really hope that everything works out the way you plan it. And we can see you back in there soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you.